Ladies and gentlemen, mutants and non-mutants, welcome to a scientific exploration of one of the most fascinating creatures known to mankind, or should I say, mutant kind. Today we will delve deep into the anatomy of Beast from X-Men, the blue-furred, brainy, brawny, and altogether badass member of the X-Men team. So grab your lab coats, put on your thinking caps, and get ready to learn about the inner workings of this magnificent mutant specimen. Let us get started on another marvelous video. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Thanks. Let's kill this guy. Why does he look like an ape? It is not every day that a scientist injects themselves with a serum and transforms into a blue-furred, ape-like creature. But that is exactly what happened to Hank McCoy, also known as Beast. And let us be honest, it is probably not the first time someone has said, Hank, you look like an ape. But do not be fooled by his simian appearance. Beast is a brilliant scientist and a valuable member of the X-Men. Those retractable claws and elongated fangs might come in handy for opening a can of soda, but he has also got enhanced strength, agility, and healing abilities. And let us not forget about his super senses, which include the ability to track someone by scent. That's right, he can sniff out a villain faster than a bloodhound. But let us get back to the question at hand. Why does Beast look like an ape? Well, it all started with a little experiment gone awry. Hank was working on a genetic mutation serum when he discovered a hormonal extract that could cause a person to mutate. And like any good scientist, he decided to test it on himself. The result? A blue-furred, ape-like creature with incredible abilities. Now, some might argue that Beast's transformation was a mistake, but I like to think of it as an opportunity. Sure, he might not be winning any beauty contests, but he has learned to embrace his beastly form and use his abilities for good. And let's be honest, it is probably easier to fight crime when you're covered in fur and have retractable claws. Besides, who says that looking like an ape is a bad thing? Apes are incredibly intelligent creatures with complex social structures and communication skills. Some might even argue that Beast's ape-like appearance is a testament to his intelligence and evolutionary superiority. After all, he did develop a serum that could turn anyone into a mutant. So the next time someone tries to insult Beast by saying he looks like an ape, he should just hold his head high and say, thank you for noticing my superior intellect and physical abilities. And if that doesn't work, he can always use his fangs to scare them off. <laughs> How genius is Beast? To put it simply, Beast is a certified genius. With a vast knowledge of genetics, biochemistry, and electronics, and six PhDs, he is one of the smartest people in the Marvel Universe. His intelligence has made him capable enough to create some truly groundbreaking inventions, which include the Danger Room, Cerebra, a device that is capable of time travel, and the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. He has even cured the legacy virus, which had been plaguing mutants for years. But it's not just his scientific accomplishments that make him a genius. Beast also has an eidetic memory and is well-informed in art history, literature, and music. He is also multilingual and is able to speak several different languages fluently. It is no wonder he is often called upon as the X-Men's resident expert on mutant genetics and evolutionary biology. In fact, he has even used his natural charm as a diplomat to represent mutant rights across the planet. Of course, like any genius, Beast has his struggles. He has had to deal with moments where his intelligence has diminished, and he has had to contain his more feral instinct at times. But despite these challenges, his brain is truly his defining feature. Can he run with his hands and feet? How fast can he run? Well, it is not every day you see a blue-furred, ape-like creature running around on all fours like a wild animal. But that's just another day in the life of Beast. And let me tell you, this mutant is not just fast, he is superhumanly fast. Thanks to his enhanced agility and speed, Beast can run up to 40 miles per hour for short distances. And when he's on all fours, he's even faster. It's like watching a cheetah sprint across the African savanna, if that cheetah had big furry hands and feet and can also speak multiple languages. But it's not just his speed that makes Beast an impressive physical specimen. He can also jump over 32 feet in the air and has a 50-foot broad jump. 
That's like jumping over a school bus with ease. And let's not forget about his vice-like grip, which also allows him to climb and grip onto surfaces like a spider. All of these traits make Beast an incredibly effective fighter and athlete. He can attack opponents before they can react and keep up with foes who have low-level superhuman speeds. And despite his massive ape-like physique, he can perform physical feats that would make even the most accomplished human athlete jealous. <laughs> Does he have superhuman strength? Is he physically stronger than Captain America? When it comes to superhuman strength, few mutants can hold a candle to the mighty beast. With his hulking frame, rippling muscles, and incredible agility, this blue-furred behemoth is a force to be reckoned with on any battlefield. At a towering six feet tall and weighing in at a whopping 355 pounds, Beast is a true physical specimen, but it's not just his size and weight that makes him a formidable opponent. It's his incredible strength and speed that set him apart from the rest of the X-Men. With the ability to lift up 10 tons, Beast can smash through brick walls with a single punch, toss cars like they're toys, and even tie iron barbells into knots. And that's not all. His incredible strength extends to his legs as well, which allows him to leap up to 32 feet high or 50 feet in a standing broad jump. But what really sets Beast apart is his agility. Despite his massive size and weight, he is incredibly nimble and quick on his feet, with a top speed of 40 miles per hour over short distances. This combination of speed and strength makes him a blue cannonball on the battlefield, able to charge into battle with incredible force and speed. And when it comes to leaping, Beast is truly in a league of his own. But what really makes Beast's strength and agility so remarkable is the way he combines them in battle. Whether he is leaping into the fray, smashing through walls, or tossing cars around like they're paperweights, he always manages to use his incredible strength and speed to his advantage. It's easy to see why Beast is such a beloved member of the X-Men. With his towering frame, rippling muscles, and incredible agility, he is a true powerhouse on the battlefield, able to take on even the most fearsome foes with ease. So if you ever find yourself facing off against this blue-furred warrior, just remember, you are in for a fight that you will never forget. Beast is physically stronger than Captain America. In comparison to Beast, Captain America is considered to be as strong as a human can physically get, but his strength is still limited to around 800 to 1,000 pounds of lifting capacity. While Captain America is a highly trained and skilled fighter, Beast superhuman strength gives him a significant advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Beast's agility and quick reflexes combined with his strength make him a challenging opponent in any battle. How many senses does he have? They say a dog's sense of smell is one of the most powerful in the animal kingdom. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Beast's sense of smell makes a dog's look like child's play. This blue-furred mutant has enhanced acute senses that are comparable to certain animals. And let me tell you, he uses them to their fullest extent. Beast's sense of smell is so powerful that he can identify and track someone purely by scent over open terrain. That's right, he can sniff out a villain faster than a bloodhound. And his vision is just as impressive. He can see distant objects more clearly than a normal human, and has cat-like night vision that allows him to see in near total darkness. But that's not all. Beast's large and furry feet are sensitive enough to detect electronic signals, like those from bombs or listening devices, through solid walls and floors. And his incredible sense of balance and equilibrium allows him to swing off tree branches and walk across tight rope-sized spaces with ease. It's like watching a circus performer in action. And let's not forget about his durability. Beast can take a three-story drop without breaking a sweat. Combine that with his training in some of Marvel's elite fighters, like Wolverine and Captain America, and you've got a hand-to-hand -hand combatant who brings acrobatic slant to the usual superhero scuffle. Does he know magic? Can he transform into a demon? Beast may be known for his incredible intelligence and physical abilities, but did you know that he also dabbled in the dark arts? That's right, this blue-furred mutant has a few tricks up his sleeve that go beyond just science and brute strength. It all began when Beast found himself stranded in the present with the original teenage X-Men and sought help from Doctor Strange to return to their time. When Strange refused, Beast and Doctor Strange were attacked by the Shadow Goblins of the Twelfth Dimension. But after coming to an understanding with Doctor Strange, he received the Third Eye of Horus during the fight. He began experimenting with magic to try and time travel, but his initial attempts were unsuccessful. 
Through trial and error, Beast discovered that the third eye of Horus, which Doctor Strange had given him, had the power to send whoever wore it across time. He continued to experiment and eventually realized that he could travel across time within the present timeline. However, his experiments caused a rift that allowed the Goblin Queen, along with the demonic army of hers, to enter the current world. Beast worked to banish the Queen and her army to the hell they belonged, but his experimentation with mysticism led him down a dark path. He transformed into a powerful, demon-like form with gray fur, horns, and cloven hooves to fight off invading demons and save his friends. However, his memories of his time dabbling in magic were erased by Jean Grey before they returned to their time. Despite the consequences, Beast continued to explore his abilities and push boundaries. He may be known for his intelligence and physical prowess, but his foray into magic has shown that he is an admirable mutant with many talents. Telling you about this is Hank McCoy, one of our most talented young researchers. How wonderful! Another mutant already here. Can he resist the telepathy? Beast, being a mutant, possesses a moderate level of resistance to telepathic manipulation. He has demonstrated this ability on several occasions, most notably when he was able to resist the powerful telepathic abilities of Cassandra Nova for a short time. However, his resistance was ultimately overcome when Nova used his own fears of devolving into a mindless animal against him. Despite this setback, Beast's telepathic resistance is still a valuable asset to him and his team. It allows him to protect his thoughts and emotions from telepathic intrusion, which makes it more difficult for his enemies to read his mind or control his actions. Does he have a healing power? Yes, Beast does have a healing power. Beast has an exceptional healing ability that allows him to recover from mild to moderate injuries much faster than an average person. This means that he can heal from minor illnesses such as cold or fevers in just a few hours. Even more severe injuries like broken bones used to only take a few days to heal, which is a significantly shorter time frame than what is usual for humans, who may take weeks or even months to heal from such injuries. Over time, Beast's healing abilities have improved, and he can now recover from mild to moderate injuries within just a few hours. This is an impressive feat that sets him apart from most other superheroes when it comes to healing powers. However, it is also worth noting that he is unable to regenerate lost or destroyed organs or limbs. In addition to his impressive healing abilities, Beast also possesses a high level of immunity to foreign chemicals, such as tranquilizers and certain types of poison. This immunity is partially responsible for his ability to recover from mild illnesses so quickly. His advanced immune system also provides him with a slight degree of protection against aging, which is still why he looks and feels as though he is in his prime, despite being 40 years old since the time of Nova's attack. It is important to note that Beast's healing abilities have varied over time, and he has lost and regained his healing factor at different points in history. For example, when he first transformed into Beast, he could only heal from an injury instantaneously. However, he has lost this healing ability after a significant battle with Quasimodo. During this battle, Beast's fur was also changed from gray to black. Is he capable of resisting extreme cold temperature? It's safe to say that Beast is something of a cold weather expert. He probably wouldn't be caught dead wearing a parka, but that's only because he is already covered in fur. If you're looking for someone to curl up with on a chilly winter night, Beast might just be your guy. But it's not just his fur that makes him cold resistant. Beast has some serious biological advantages that allow him to thrive in sub-zero temperatures. For one thing, his healing abilities are off the charts. Even if he were to suffer from frostbite, he would probably be able to bounce back in no time. And let us not forget about his resistance to foreign chemicals. If some villain were trying to poison him with a cold-inducing serum, Beast would likely shrug it off like it was nothing. Craven and Hunter learned this lesson the hard way, and it is safe to say that he will not be trying that trick again anytime soon. You're beautiful. So are you. What about me? Does Beast have any romantic relationships? Can he reproduce? Beast, one of the most beloved X-Men, has had his fair share of romantic entanglements. From his brief fling with Dazzler, to his complicated relationship with Jean Grey in an alternate reality, Beast has provided that even a big blue furball can find love. 
First up, we have his brief fling with Dazzler in the four-issue miniseries Beauty and the Beast. While taking away some time from the Defenders, Beast travels to Hollywood and meets Dazzler, who is exposed as a mutant and is being taken advantage of. After rescuing her from a dangerous situation, Beast and Dazzler bond over their shared fate as mutants and begin to fall in love. Unfortunately, Dazzler does not want to be a superhero, and the relationship ends on a bittersweet note. Next, we have Beast's complicated love triangle with Jean Grey and Cyclops in an alternate reality continuation. When Jean discovers Beast's feelings for her, she realizes that she doesn't really love Scott and shares a kiss with Beast. Talk about a messy situation. Moving on, we have Cecilia Reyes, one of the most medically skilled and knowledgeable mutants on Krakoa. While not a romantic relationship, Reyes provides a counterbalance to Beast's weaponization-focused mindset in X-Force. Her humanistic approach and ability to address her concerns from a scientific perspective makes her the perfect person to keep Beast in check and serve as his conscience. As for Beast's ability to reproduce, that's a bit of a tricky question. Being a mutant, his genetic makeup is different from that of a normal human. But the presence of Syrian McCoy, Beast's eldest child with Cecilia Reyes, makes it clear that Beast can reproduce. Is he immortal? Is Beast immortal? Well, he might as well be, considering how many times he has been killed and resurrected. It's like he's playing a game of X-Men whack-a-mole, except instead of moles, it's his own life. But let's not forget that Beast is not just some innocent victim of circumstances. He has dabbled in villainy himself, whether it's creating a mindless Wolverine assassin or bugging the entire world with Krakoa's drugs. It's like he's trying to one-up Magneto in the supervillain department. And yet, for all his intelligence and power, Beast still manages to get himself killed by Wolverine. You would think he would have learned his lesson by now. But no, he just keeps coming back, like a bad penny or a stubborn stain that will not come out of your favorite shirt. Maybe that's why Wolverine is so mad at him. It's not just that Beast killed him and messed up with his memories, although that is certainly a good reason to be angry. It's also the fact that Beast keeps cheating death like he is some kind of immortal god who can't be touched. Of course, we all know that's not really true. Beast may have nine lives, but he's still just a mutant like the rest of them. And as long as Wolverine has his adamantium claws and his unquenchable rage, there is always a chance he will finally put Beast down for good. But then again, maybe not. After all, Beast has a backup body ready to go, just in case. It's as if he is taunting Wolverine, saying, you can kill me, but I will just come back stronger and smarter than ever. So is Beast immortal? No, not really, but he might as well be, considering he has backups of himself into which his mind can be downloaded. And as long as he keeps playing the villain and cheating death, Wolverine will probably keep trying to take him down. It sure is a never-ending cycle of mutant drama, and we can't help but love it. I thought you were a diplomat. Yeah, as Churchill said, there comes a time when all men must... What is his weakness? Beast, the X-Men's resident genius and furball, may seem invincible with his super strength and intelligence, but even he has weaknesses. One of Beast's biggest weaknesses is his animal instincts. He has had to come to terms with them over the years, as they've become more intense with each new mutation. Unfortunately, his enemies have also taken advantage of this weakness in the past. Cassandra Nova, for example, was able to make him act like an animal, much to his humiliation. Luckily, he was eventually able to break free from her control with the help of his teammate, Beak. Another of Beast's weaknesses is his heightened senses. While they can be an advantage in some situations, they can also be a liability. His sensitive hearing, for example, can be used against him by enemies who know how to manipulate sound. Similarly, his sense of smell can also be exploited. As he can be overwhelmed by strong or unpleasant odors, Beast has another rather unusual weakness, an allergy to sawdust. While this may seem like a minor inconvenience, it can be a serious problem for him, especially if he is exposed to large amounts of sawdust. This weakness can be exploited by his enemies, who may use sawdust as a way to incapacitate him or weaken him during a fight. Marvelous Verdict In conclusion, the anatomy of Beast from X-Men is a remarkable example of the power of mutation and adaptation. From his superhuman strength and agility to his genius-level intellect, 
Every aspect of Beast's anatomy is perfectly suited for his life as a superhero, but what truly sets Beast apart is his unique physical appearance. Covered in blue fur and possessing large hands and feet, pointed ears, and a prehensile tail, Beast is a one-of-a-kind mutant. Whether you're a science enthusiast, a comic book fan, or just someone who appreciates a good story, there is something truly awe-inspiring about the marvels of Beast's anatomy. So let us continue to celebrate and explore the wonders of the X-Men universe and all of the amazing mutants within it. What do you think of Beast's mutant abilities? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to drop a like and hit that subscribe button on your way out. Until next time, folks, have a good one. I built Cerebro to amplify my power. I think that's the only way I'm going to get inside a head now.